Oh man. So, uh, it's possible, you know, the thing. There's one Canon Core OC comment. I'm deleting everything. So the <laughs> so the Canon Core motor by Float Wheel, Tony and his team. Gigantic axle, 63 millimeters diameter. Fantastic, okay. Because the Thor 300, the Enoid Mark VIII now, okay. The Jet Fleet F6. Kind of similar. All of these fit in here. You just need the right mount. Behold, the fusion core. So this is a lump of aluminium. A bit more to it than that. Um, it was originally going to be called the Demon Core, but um, then I saw this guy on Facebook who made like a solid XR axle, and he called it the Demon Core, so it's stolen. Kind of bummed about that. Whoever he is. I've forgotten his name. I didn't read his name. Anyway, he's probably watching this and he's just like, that's me. Uh, okay. But then I watched the Fallout TV show and I was like, oh yeah, that game that I have 2000 hours in. Um, so this is called the Fusion Core now because it's going to make your one wheel last forever. Um, even though it doesn't, that's like a gameplay balancing thing. Look, uh, point is aluminium block, mount your Thor 300, Enoid, whatever. Um, and with an enormous amount of work mounted perfectly inside the axle. And then you just have two lids on either side, one going to your power supply system um, with a cable gland to shield everything, another side with a breathe hole, and then you just simply use the badger kit to seal around both sides and boom, you're golden. It took a lot of work to get all of the shaping just right. Um, I went through like three or four iterations of everything, but it's pretty clean. So, thing is, the amount of work that you have to do to pull this off is absolutely ridiculous. You need to cut the motor cable short. You need to replace the phase wires with bullet connectors. You need to create a plug for the whole sensor, which is going to stick out. Um, you need to, you know, get all of these trimmed and set correctly. You need to have this uh, cable gland tightened up before you install it with the harness coming out and everything. You need, you don't need, but it's preferable to have a symmetrical battery system. Of course, that's the point of me making these SIM casings so that you can pair them with an XR or GT battery casing. Then you can have symmetrical batteries on both sides. They need to be connected just right so that you get delivered the voltage power that you want and it needs to be correctly done in series or you've like you know mess massively made a mistake it needs to charge correctly with the default charge port at the board it's uh it's a lot yeah and on top of all of that i didn't know if any of this was going to work at all of course i've been riding it for the last two days so it's great um but the problem was uh i didn't know whether or not the controller would work at all with all of the magnetic fields running around the motor of course, they should be, you know, there shouldn't be too much magnetic flux leakage into the axle, but I had no idea whether or not it would mess up the uh, microcontrollers or something like that. Um, thankfully, not the case. I was worried about the Bluetooth connection, like not connecting to the board at all, just due to the interference from being inside the axle. There's all of those magnets, there's all of those, you know, electromagnets all around the board, um, all around the vest just would kill any Bluetooth connection. Also, luckily, thankfully, no idea why, not the case at all. I've gone out for huge rides on this board already and um, perfect Bluetooth connection the whole time. And I've walked away from the board, done that kind of thing, and it's been great. So that's not a problem as well. Temperature, though, was the last concern point. Right now, I've been running this board with a Thor 300 on 20S voltage. And as soon as you run a Canon Core, past like 35 kilometers per hour, which I've been riding at pretty consistently, it gets hot. Like this motor heats up up to 60 degrees like that. Um, it's not uh, the VESC's fault. Usually my Thor 300, which has been mounted in the axle, stays like a good 10 degrees cooler than the motor around it. But it is a problem um, if you're going for high speeds at low voltages. I believe, of course, it's yet to be proven that when you run higher voltage, 30, 32S um, through this motor, you're gonna have much, much cooler experience, um, but that's yet to be proven. Um, as for now though, 
the maximum I've gotten is 60 degrees out of the motor, which is still way cooler than my my hypercore runs on you know my XR builds. So it's still good. Um, with all those concerns out the way, it's fantastic. It just works uh, after you've done a mountain of DIY work to actually build it in the first place. Because of course you need two battery systems connected perfectly. As I went through a second ago, it's a lot. You need the SIM casing. Um, that's why I've designed these for the XR and the GT so that you can get that working alongside the standard battery casing. Um, you know, there's so much DIY work that's needed in order to pull this off. It's ridiculous. Um, but it's worth it, 100% worth it. It's so much fun riding a board where you hit a bonk or you hit a drop or something like that and it's just, it stays there, it's completely level. Um, and it's really weird feeling that with a high power, high weight GT. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, and it's just been fantastic to ride over the last few days. It's probably the most surreal board that I've uh, built and ridden so far. It's completely different. Um, and I'm really excited for people to start using this. I need to talk about two things though. Um, I won't be putting files out for these parts. Um, I think it's time that I've deserved to have at least one premium product. Um, so I'll be keeping this as a purchasable kit. Um, you know, I like to keep all of my casings open source with files and downloads so that people can make uh, as many boards as they want in their own workshops. So obviously I'll stick to that, but for this kind of thing, um, I think I've deserved a bit of premium, you know, uh, pieces of work. And um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, over the last few days, I've received, you know, a bunch of messages from people saying, Stanley, you need to patent this design so that future motion doesn't copy you or something like that. And, um, Firstly, I ain't paying for a patent that's like $15,000 and that's like three times more than I spent developing this, so nope. Um, but also, Future Motion, if you're watching this, which I really hope you are, please copy me. Like, take this and just make it the next thing, you know? You've got, what is it, a year and a half until you need to be dropping the next board, at least if you stick to the patent. Um, Take this design, take this idea and go nuts because this is so hard to build in a DIY setting that, and the payoff is so awesome. Like having a board that's symmetrically weighted or at least extremely well balanced, super thin, super high power, super high range. It's the evolution of this sport in my eyes. But of course, as I've made clear, building one is ridiculously difficult. The only way that people are gonna experience this kind of board is through future motion and maybe float wheel. And of course, I think Tony's gonna be working on this already, but um, you know, I think future motion should do it as well. Um, so I'm not gonna be putting any kind of barrier on this. Uh, not that I can, not that I want to. I just want uh, good boards. That's it, I don't care about anything else. Um, however, I do ask to Future Motion, if you do start developing this design for a future board, at least, you know, fling me an invite when you're going to do product testing. Uh, that would be, that's, that's all I ask. I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, do anything. I'm not gonna be mad. I don't care. Um, I'd love to be there. I'd love to try it out. I'd love to help with the design and the work because it's super sweet. Um, and that's just all I pose. It's a bit cheeky, but eh, I don't care. You guys are much more involved with the community as of late, so I feel that that's, you know, a reason for me to finally want to actually get back to working alongside Future Motion stuff instead of trying to break free from it, you know? Um, it's relieving. I've hated, honestly, despised having to avoid Future Motion stuff over the last few years because it's just like, oh, things are just more difficult than they need to be. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Good luck building this stuff. It's rough. Um, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me. Um, and thanks to everyone for developing this tech. Like this is pretty much the culmination of the entire one wheel community. Fungineers and Fatch Digger for making, you know, the Thor and the Jet Fleet F6. Enoid, his vest functions with this as well. 
the float life if it weren't for you know those beautiful rails this wouldn't be happening as anywhere near as easily as it does um you know there's even discord folks like alden's involvement in making the cannon core hubs that helped me a lot of course tony from float wheel for making this fantastic motor everyone's involvement was necessary to pull this product off it's nuts it's pretty much the culmination of not just me but the entire one wheel community that's made this you know machine possible it's beautiful honestly um there's not one group that didn't have a hand in its creation so it's uh it's pretty exciting yeah and yeah honestly it wouldn't happen without the cannon core but the cannon core could still be better um Keep the axle, make it five inches, I don't know, that would be, be really cool. Um, that's my two cents. See ya!